that we loved every moment of it. Then we became masters. We, we pushed the boundaries as far as we can push them. It was simple as that. And to a rhythm. Remember, we, were, we never lost the beat of the music. And you did it within a phrase of a music. I just want to go back to 1932. One famous day for you, Easter Sunday, 1932. Ah, oh, when I, I went to the Savoy for the first time. Twistmouth George took me up to the Savoy to dance. Twistmouth George. He was a man, was one of the dancers that was creating the dancing at the time in the ballroom. Now here was a man that had, uh, had had a stroke and his mouth was all the way to the side of his face. That illness was called Bell's palsy. They didn't have a name for it then. Since then we, we know the meaning of different strokes and black men in those times never went to a hot doctor but he continually could dance but he had the funniest face in the world. And that's it, why he was called Twistmouth George. He's called Twistmouth George. And you were 12 years old, yeah, 12. and you were just dancing... In the street. In the street. Yeah, like all the kids do, because, see, the ballroom, there was no air conditioning, so these windows was wide open. So when a 15-piece band is playing in the ballroom, you can be down in the street and hear the same thing, So which made you respond to what you're hearing. So I guess I was cavorting about like all kids do. And he said, hey, kid, you know, I want you to dance with me. Would I want to come and dance with Twist My George? Heck yeah. And I said, yes. <laughs> so yeah. you, you danced with him that afternoon? That afternoon, and that was um, the beginning of it, I guess. But later that year, mm -hmm. I understand you entered a competition with Sonny Ashby. At the Apollo Theater. We were high school kids. And the Apollo Theater was having the first contest outside of the Savoy Ballroom. And the Lindy had been de developed by then. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, we were the kids in the ballroom that used to do the Lindy. But we were up against the top dancers at the Savoy Ballroom. But you wiped the floor, didn't you? Well, because we were the kids. We were 14 year old and we, we won the contest, yeah. And I understand that Herbert White, Whitey. Herbert, it was his dancers we went up against. And that next morning, there was a knock on my door. I'm getting ready to go to school. And I opened the door, and this is the man standing there with two other men. They looked like thugs. Anyway, he introduced himself. He said, I'm Herbert White. I am Whitey. I saw you dance last night. And I'd love the fact for you to dance with us again and not against us. And would you like to come to the Savoy? But Whitey wasn't called Whitey because of his skin, was he? No. <laughs> he had a white streak. That was right down the center of his head. And that's why it was called Whitey. And then he created the famous Whitey Linda Hoppers. Yes, and exactly. that's you. That yes. was you. And we were the kids that uh, that was named that, yeah. So when he invited you to dance, how did you feel? He said the magic board. He said he wanted me to come to the Savoy. Would I? My God, I've been in bed. Wanted to come, but I wasn't allowed to go to the Savoy at 12 years old. Because okay. you were too young. Oh, yeah. I was too young even when Whitey asked us. But see... Whitey had a purpose, and we were allowed to come in, and that we were allowed to come in and sit in the corner, and that was how it all began with us as youngsters in the ballroom. And Frankie came, and uh, we used to dance every night. You remember, we were still in school, so after school we would be able to go into the ballroom at night, and, and that was how Whitey formed this group. And I was very amused, Norman Miller, to discover why it's called the Lindy Hop from Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh took the flight across to Paris. The papers read, Lindy's Hop. And Shorty was asked at the time, who was dancing at the ballroom, what did he call this dance that he was doing? He said, I call the dance the Lindy Hop. That was, his flight was in 1927. 1927. But did you ever, I mean, looking at those dances, incredibly acrobatic, you're being thrown around, like being that. thrown over your partner's oh, head, yes. between his legs, around yes. his waist, and upside all, and down. And in time. And in time. Yeah. I became a professional dancer that was dancing at the top of the peak at all times. I mean, we had been with Ethel Waters show, and we went cross-country from New York all the way out to California on a bus, she was the first major black star we had. And she was taking her show on the road. And we were the kid dancers in the show. But you were, were you never scared? Not scared, but somebody might have thrown you just a bit too high. Did you have any injuries? 
We had injuries. I think every part of my body was injured. Injuries. God, I have a bad shoulder, bad back, bad knees, bad ankle. I mean, it was, but see, there was no, there was no way of healing. And like when we got to uh, making dead to races, that I think I hurt my ankle. But now there's no understudy. And there's no time to, to leave to So they ankle used to, to shoot me up with codeine so that you were able to do the show. But that was the worst thing in the world because what happened, the, that you had be, begin to develop scar tissue. And that's what my ankles are made up of, a lot of scar tissue today. Were you ever exhausted? Yes, I went to the hospital for six months for, out of exhaustion. You, I was 17 and I went into the hospital and I didn't come out until I was 18 because I had been dancing all my life up until then. Because you went down to 89 pounds, pounds yeah. which is less than 40 kilos. Oh, yeah, they, there was nothing to you. I was a skeleton. And that was after your film appearance at Dare and the Races? Dare the Races, yeah. After the six months and they were going to let me come home. My aunt said, well, don't worry about it. We'll make a fat again. My aunt used to fix me raw eggs and, and orange juice. Raw eggs and orange, orange juice? I had to drink that every morning. What, high protein and high vitamins? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got hurt badly, yeah. Can you remember any particular incidences? Well, yeah, you know that step. Frank May had a dance where he'd take the girl and he'd snatch her. Like, he'd take, she's from a squat position, and he brings her up and she goes to his shoulder. Well, when I did the step, when they snatched me, my arm came, but the body didn't come with me. So the, this whole thing uh, came out of place. What, so you dislocated your shoulder? Ooh, ooh, it's still to, till today. I gotta be careful because these joints come out very easily. Day at the Races was a Thank very you. famous Marx Brothers film. Marx Brothers being oh, incredibly 17. zany, American. Zany. They were the greatest in the world, but we never worked together. Even though this was a, 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 a bit in the film. We did the, the filming, but they put the Marx Brothers in afterwards. And if you notice, we are never together in that. It it's, was just cut in. It's cut in, yeah. And the same with Helsa Poppin, wasn't it? That Helsa was Poppin, no, we were designed for Helsa Poppin, because they were on Broadway for five years. So when they decided to make the movie, we were included. But we were a dance act in the meantime. What we were added, but you notice that we were all in domesticated wardrobe. Billy and I was the cook. Downs was like a chauffeur. Frankie was like from the stables. I remember you were still in a segregated America and they had to fix it so that we looked like we were servants. And that became an issue with us later in life where black kids said they didn't want to do what we were doing because we were servants to white people. And I heard that, put you know. You came on as the second couple, as the cooks, didn't as you? As the cook, yeah. Me Chief. and Billy Ricker, yeah. You and Billy Ricker. But then after the, the big swing era, we had rock and roll, we had Elvis, we had the Beatles. Swing went out of fashion. Uh, completely out of fashion. But it's enjoying a bit of a revival now, isn't it? Now, that's exactly what happened. The ashes are beginning to still uh, smolder. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the Swedes did not resurrect Lindy. They gave it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resurrection. <laughs> What about now? now? Swing Patrol have brought you over the, to London to help rejuvenate, help revive. Oh, them. yeah, they're part of that, definitely. They're, but now they've enjoyed by countries. They are countries now, can you imagine? Who are enjoying Swing Germany is the... I remember in Nigeria, when we came over to Europe, we brought the Lindy over in 1935. We came to London. And we came to Paris, but we couldn't go into Germany because I had a Jewish manager and four black dancers. Seventy years later, I went to Germany, and I saw on the floor everybody dance like Frankie Manning. That's why I wrote the song, Swing in Frankie's Way. And how it? does it go? Uh, he won't swing in his rhythm. Swing in his beat. Swing is the kind of music make you pat your feet, put on your... 
dancing shoes, throw away your blues. Cause today we're swinging Frankie's way.